Okay, and welcome back to Fastship Performance. My name is Tim Davies. I'm a flying instructor in Her Majesty's Royal Air Force, and I also run a website called fastshipperformance.com where I talk about performance and I talk about aviation. Head over there and have a read some of the articles if you're interested. But today we're in a Hawk T2 out of RF Valley at 7,000 feet, 300 knots. I've just closed the throttle simulating an engine failure, and today we're going to learn about practice force landings in military fast jet aircraft. Okay, and uh, welcome to this lecture, and it is a lecture, okay, because after this, uh, the aim is to land a fast jet after an engine failure, and that is what you'll be able to do after this lecture by your instructor today, me, Tim, age 41 and three quarters. I'm not joking, this is an absolute nightmare to write on this thing. I should use one of those Surface tablet things, but I'm actually using something called a mouse. All right, so uh, let's have a look then. This is us, we're out here uh, next to Carnarvon pretty much, and we're gonna make a recovery, engine off, engine off, no, uh, just with a throttle idle on a PFL to somewhere called Mona. Mona is the relief landing ground of RAF Valley, which is here, but I can't go to RAF Valley today because the boss is leading a fly pass for the graduation and he would definitely tell me off. The wind I've annotated here is uh, 04010. The runway I'm going for is runway 04, so annotated pretty much correctly into the wind. So that's actually one of the most perfect um, days for conducting actual force landings or PFLs. Let's annotate this, shall we? So what are my parameters now? Draw it neatly. I'm at about 7,000 feet. There we go. Look at this. It's easy, isn't it? And I'm actually about six miles from Mona. That says nautical miles, by the way. Uh, in fact, I'll write that again. So we are looking to turn inbound pretty soon. What I've done is I've simulated an engine mechanical failure um, with all engine vibrations, damaged engine. So what I would do is come back to idle. I'd actually look at getting some height, but in this case, I'm actually going to remain level and use that energy to start my turn. And I would check my T6, which is the temperature at the sixth stage of the turbine. And if it's above 885, I'd have to shut the engine down. That's what I'm simulating doing today, putting the air brake in and then obviously shutting the, uh, shutting the, uh, the throttle. Now, when I do that, I move my hand obviously away from the throttle. I don't want to actually do that for real. Um, I just come back to idle and I start a right hand turn. And uh, that's pretty much what we're going to do. So let's have a look what we do then. We want to be on something called the one in one. One in one. And what that means is that when I'm at 5,000 feet, for example, I want to be at five miles. When I get those parameters, I then can configure my undercarriage only. Okay, so let's write that up here. Let's go, say, for something like 5,000 feet. And we want to be at five miles to the airfield. Now, those aren't defined parameters, guys. We could be 6,000 feet at six miles, okay? But we want to be on what's called the one in one. That allows us to get our undercarriage down. So I'm just gonna put gear there. When we get our gear down, we've got to fly at a different speed. Initially, we're gonna glide at 190 knots, because that is our min drag speed. And what we can do is we can fly uh, at our min drag speed. So 190 knots, well, that will give us Come on, I need to get one of these surface things. Any sponsors of fastjetperformance.com want to send me a little tablet thing, I guarantee these videos will be better. Okay, 190 knots will give us two nautical miles for every one, that's two nautical miles per 1,000 feet of height loss. Okay, quick maths question then. I lose my engine, I climb to 10,000 feet, how far? Can I glide? Yeah, about 20 miles, and then I impact the threshold, okay? So, what happens is I get my gear down then, 5,000 feet of five miles, it's brilliant. When I'm on the one in one, that's great. And then I'm looking for something else. I'm actually having to glide now at 175 knots with my gear configured. 190 into 175, and you'll see me do that. I'll try and hold those parameters, and then what I'm looking for is to get uh, about 14 degrees nose down in the head-up display of something called a runway designation or my threshold. Once I get that 14 degrees, I'll then configure with full flap, all right? So 14 degrees, full flap. And it'll be on the standby system for real. It'll travel in about a second, okay? And that gives me a rate of ascent, that's nose down here, of about 800 foot per minute. That's quite significant. We're going to talk 8,000 foot per minute. That's quite significant. We're going to talk about why that is in a minute. So my ground track, let's do this in red, shall we? I'm going to use my energy to start my turn. Okay, and I'm going to get myself on the runway center line here, and I'm going to drive it in, drive it in, get in the one in one. Look at that. I'm going to put my gear down, on I? Flight 170 knots. And I'm going to carry on until that is 14 degrees nose down. Okay, when it's 14 degrees nose down, I'm going to put my flap down. I'm going to travel my flap and I'm gonna fly different parameters now, and that's 160 to 190 knots. That's full flap, 
I'm not even going to write the speeds up there. It's 160 to 190 knots. I'm going to try and hold those parameters. And I'm going to do a two-stage round out. And you'll see that two-stage round out presenting the main wheels to the runway. And I want to land, as I said, about a third of the way down the runway. So it's um, about 5,000 foot. It's about 1,500 to 2,000 foot down the runway, really. And just before the 3,000 to go boards. You'll hear me talk about the 3,000 to go boards because that's why I need full power on the airplane. Because the engine, the turbo macro door 951, takes about eight seconds to spool up. Okay, So I need that power. Power, else there's every chance I'm going to run into that barrier at the end of the runway. I know you love my diagrams. These are awesome, okay? Um, by all means, look at this. Look at smiley face. Thank you for letting me draw you a nice diagram today. There we go. Let's go and watch the film, shall we? Okay, back in the cockpit we are. So you'll hear some audio from air traffic and eventually I'll let you uh, listen to me from the actual cockpit. Right now you're listening to me from the comfort of my office. 7,000 feet then, descending through uh, speed, decelerating through 250 knots. I'm going to start turning in now. I've just sorted some engine drills out. The first thing we do is uh, airspeed, steering and hydraulics. So I want 190 knots. I'm steering to Mona and I have my hide page up to check the hydraulics. Reptile to Tony just letting air traffic know what I'm doing because the hydraulics are really important because I'm going to lose my hide one system. The hide pump runs off the engine, the engine dies, the hide one pump dies too. So I don't have my gear and my flaps, I've got to blow them down on standby systems. And I've only got the hide two system running off what's called a ram air turbine uh, out the back of the airplane, like a little windmill that generates some hydraulic pressure for me that allows me to uh, still use the power flying controls, which are only powered from one side only, but it is enough. Um, but I need to maintain a speed range for that. And I need to, as I said, put the gear and the flap down on standby systems, which means they'll come down in about a second of deploying them. So I'm rolling out now, trying to pick up the scent line for 040, really, and holding that 190 knots as best I can. Looking to get on the one in one. 6,000 feet, 6.5 nautical miles. That's not the one in one. I've got to carry that glide on now. And I'm hoping to catch that pretty soon. Uh, you will see that flashing diamond on the left-hand side with a G. That represents the uh, runway that I need to come across to pretty soon when I get on the 040. Um, pretty soon as well, air traffic are going to tell me. It's just me traveling the gears. Air traffic now are going to call me across the tower. Join Harbour Cotter. Big that's just me configuring then and now I've got to fly at 175 knots with the gear down you can see the gear is down I've got an e-bar sent to the screen Pretty cool speed, back 175 barriers about 70 knots reptile 2 join straight in PFL 1005 uh, set gear down Okay, so before I fully commit into the final stages of this PFL, let me take a pencil here and try and show you what I'm doing with this. So what I'm looking at now, uh, residual brake pressure here, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's my height up here. Okay, there's my speed, and I want to keep that uh, between 160 and 190 as I commit down. This is an E-bar. We use this thing here um, to show us the alpha of the airplane. What else we got here? That's where the threshold is down here. There's a threshold, I'll draw an arrow to it. And I want to be landing a third of the way down. So about here on this runway, it's about 5,000 foot long. Uh, so I want to be landing really a third of the way down then. Let's call it old maths, shall we? And we're looking around about, what, um, about, third, about 2,000 feet, something like that, I guess. Yeah, roughly just under 2,000 feet, whatever. So power on about a 3,000 to go boards. There's my range here and it's three miles to Mona. So right now, you pretty much know what's going to happen. I'm waiting for this symbol down here, the runway designation. I'll write des there. When that gets to 14 degrees nose down, I will commit. And uh, once I commit, it will be a full flap. We'll travel. Um, we're traveling about a second on the standby systems. And now I'll be about 14 to 15 degrees nose down. And this is the part where we're really outside of ejection seat limits because the rate of descent here is about six to 8,000 feet per minute rate of descent. Our ejection seat, we use 10% of that um, as the speed, as the height we can get out. So it's going to be about 800 feet. From about 800 feet, we're really outside of ejection seat limits here. Right, let's roll VT. And I'm inside the airplane now speaking to you, okay? We're looking at 14 degrees and so holding 175, 14 degrees off one. There we can assess. 75 to hold. Every so often we've got to dip the nose just to check that. There we are, it's about 14 degrees there. And down flap travels. Travelling one second. 
and accept that attitude now. There we go. So three grains. Now if I have one ninety one sixty. Point of the runway, looking like the third way down, holding that attitude. Three grains, down flap, in the bracket, less than 20 degrees either side, less than 45 degrees angle of bank. I have my gear locked down, my flap is also down. Talk about barrier speed. I do have clearance, power on my 3000 to go. Over the top of that bracket if I need to, speed wise. Two stays round out, 190 is on maximum. Long to the runway. First stage now. Pause. Hold it off. Second stage now. We can put 3,000 a gate board. Birds acknowledged. Holding it. Power now. There's 3,000. Put birds crossing. Don't hit them. That's us. Positive climb. Gear travels. Flat travels. Pull up. Holding Pull attitude. up. Here is up. The front is up by 250. Clear, clear, clear. And reptiles to right downwind to Valley Tower. Watch your Valley Runway 01, if the 101. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Now you've got a bit more understanding what we do in the cockpit, and that's why I make these videos, to let our engineers uh, know what's going on pretty much, because they do ask me, and also the taxpayer who provides the money for these sorties to train these uh, students up for the front line, so you guys get a bit more understanding of what we're actually doing at Valley. If you see an aircraft in one of those high dive profiles at the threshold, this is exactly what's happening. They're practicing force landings, um, so they know how to get it right when it happens for real. Any questions, YouTube comments, Twitter, uh, fastshipperformance.com, uh, Facebook page, fastshipperformance.com, or indeed email me at tim at fastshipperformance.com. I read everything and I will answer as much as I possibly can. I have a lot of international comments coming in now. I really appreciate the, uh, the contribution you guys make. Stay safe. Tim Davies, Fastship Performance.